Now, in 2015, he became an outspoken voice for the transgender community. A year later, he was praised for being the first American to be legally recognized as what they call non-binary. Jamie Shoup was the darling of the LGBTQ world. Instead of recognizing, though, a desperate cry for help, doctors, judges, and activists used him to advance their cause, he says. They took advantage of his vulnerability as an Army veteran suffering from PTSD to break barriers. Shoup will never be the same. Joining me now to tell his story, and it's shocking, is Jamie Shoup himself. Jamie, thank you for being here. It takes a lot of courage to be here. Um, you say the transgender community has not only turned their backs on you, but are now attacking you? What happened? That's, that's correct, Laura. Uh, the minute you denounce anything transgenderism-wise, um, you're automatically an outcast. Uh, for example, I support President Trump's, tr President Trump's ban on transgender military service. I do not agree with um, transitioning children or, or transgender surgeries. I, I'm against all of this. Now, did you take the hormones and start doing all that? And you, you didn't obviously do surgery, I guess, but you did start taking estrogen and progesterone. What did you do? Yes, I, I took estrogen and progesterone. Uh, I now have irreversible breast growth. Um, uh -huh. I had a number of health complications from this. I have now have bone density problems. I've had kidney problems. And at one point, my mental health was so destabilized by the, the hormones that I had two stays in a psychiatric ward because of it. Do you think this kind of push is being used broadly, more broadly, uh, you hear from, I hear from a lot of people, and you see a lot of examples. Heritage Foundation did a big panel of feminists who are actually really upset by this because they think people are being kind of pushed into this, you know, this, you know, this kind of view of, of life and transgenderism before they really kind of know who they are, um, or is that wrong? No, that, that's, that's completely correct. Um, I... My head is off to the Heritage Foundation because it's really the only place that people such as myself and, and these radical feminists are, are getting a voice. Um, we've been completely silenced by by the left. You know, as you said, I was previously a, a you know transgender media darling, and now the New York Times doesn't want to talk about me anymore or even acknowledge that I exist because I no longer support this stuff. Yes, uh, the, the conservatives are, are to be commended for what they're doing to help us, to help children. Have you talked to other people who began transitioning and maybe even did transition? Have they reached out to you if they have regrets? Do they look, look to you for advice or just to share a story? Yes, Laura. Re regret is unfortunately is very common, but uh, but again, you know, the, the the media doesn't want to talk about these surgeries that go wrong and and the host of health complications, and it's really wrong to even call this transition because gender identity is is essentially it's, it's legal fiction. You know, first they claimed that I was a woman, and then they claimed that I was a combination of male and female, and and, and everybody went along with this. But as I said, it, it's nothing but legal fiction. Sergeant, uh, we wish you the best. I know it's incredible. It sounds incredibly traumatic and difficult. And I hope you'll stay in touch with us. Um, and we'll certainly stay in touch with you. Thank you so much. Thank you and too, Laura. Absolutely.